However, there is no general formula for the length of the period, so that's something we don't know yet. Challenge accepted, good sir. To speed up this wild goose chase, let's automate the production of Pisano periods. I'll be using Python 3, mostly because it's so easy, you can do it too. I mean you. You owe me! Yes, you owe me! And I'll congratulate us with another cup of tea! And this is a video that isn't the video of that song. It would be wrong to use that material that's held by managerial suits at Disney. And this is the audio that isn't the audio of that song. Please don't take long. Just get your interpreter. Herp, derp, derp, derp. Hurry up, please. All right, let's define a function called Pisano, which takes a divisor as an argument. Before we actually do anything, it's a good habit to write a bit about the function. To begin, we need to set up the start of the Fibonacci sequence. So we create a variable called fib, make it an array, which is essentially an ordered list, and set the first two numbers, 0 and 1. Now, as the rest of the sequence is generated, the same steps will be repeated over and over. The simplest way to do this is a while true loop. Here come the meat and potatoes. There's a property of these remainders that you can just add up the previous two remainders. We append to the array the sum of the two previous numbers and modulo by the divisor. In other words, add the first and second number over from the right get the remainder of this division, then add it to the growing list. This while loop will happily run until Armageddon, so we better check for the end of the Pisano period to stop it. The period restarts after the next 0, 1. So that 0, 1 is like a big trigger point. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to send you back to the start again. Basically, if the last number is 1 and the second to last number is 0. Once this has been noticed though, the process has gone two numbers too far. So when we return the answer fib, slice the last two off. Enter, enter, and behold, a new function. Now, try calling Pisano, putting a number in the parentheses for the divisor. When comparing periods though, often the length is more helpful. Type the function like before, but nest it inside len for length. We could do this all day, but it would be faster to do a whole range of numbers at once. So, for n, in range 2 to 100, print n, a colon for separation, and len, pisano, n. Let's pause a moment to bask in this new power and review the code. That's very important! Jory, write that down! Now, let's actually dig into the patterns and the numbers. To me, the most striking pattern is in the powers of primes. Here, look at 2 with a length of 3. 4, or 2 squared, is twice as long. 8, which is 2 cubed, is double the length of 4. The next power of 2, 16, is twice as long as that, and so on. 3, the next prime after 2, has a length of 8. 9 is 3 times longer with a length of 24. 27 is 3 times longer with 72, and 81 has a period of 216 numbers. Going on, 5 has a length of 20. 25 has 5 times that long a period. I have yet to find a prime where this is not the case, although the best I've done is pick arbitrary primes. More formally, it appears that the length of the Pisano period of a power of a prime is equal to the length of the Pisano period of the prime times the prime to the power minus one. Why do you think this is so? Can you find any other patterns in period length? Take a look at the multiples of six. They're eerie. What's the longest Pisano period you can generate? Or think artistically. I'll take my own shot at a musical setting of a Pisano period in an upcoming video. Curiosity often leads to trouble. Oh, 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 oh. No!